So let's continue our discussion by adding a new section. Um, so we're going to click in here to the new section and we're going to do Alt 4 for adding a new section and we're going to do some basic computations beyond the simple arithmetic that we did earlier. All right, so the down arrow here. Um, and let's start by creating a variable name that will allow us to use numbers uh, repeatedly in a computation without having to type the number in every time. Um, so we'll start with something which we will call mass. That's our variable name and then we just hit equal sign. Now remember we just started entering the cell. I didn't select a particular style simply because the default is input so I can just start typing and let's just give it a number we'll say 25.0 is the number for our mass. Um, there are no units here but we will talk about units in another video so we'll learn how to apply units to our computations which are going to be really important um, in our class and then let's go ahead and Enter, say the speed of light which will give C is that and again later on we'll learn how we can get constants embedded in the Mathematica database and use them automatically for entry so our speed of light will just enter 2.998 as our number here times 10 um, and we're going to raise it to the exponent eighth. Now there are a couple different ways we can do that. We can go ahead and hit the shift caret above the six. So basically shift six on your keyboard um, and we can do to the eighth power. Alternatively, if we want to do sub, uh, superscripts um, and, and make it look nicer, uh, we can hit control caret or control six and you'll see we get the superscript and we can do that. Now you have to be careful with superscripts because if you're using the browser-based version of Mathematica um, while it will recognize a superscript that's been typed in a document you will be unable to type superscripts in the browser-based version of Mathematica so you do have to be careful about that uh, when you are doing these and building these notebooks that you might be later using in the browser-based version. Um, if I go ahead and hit shift enter at this point um, I've entered that. Now you will notice that and actually I did not hit shift enter up here I believe so you will notice that when you hit shift enter that you get the output and sometimes in cases like this when you're assigning variables maybe you don't want the output to be listed because it takes up a separate line of text and you may not want that to appear in your document. Of course you can always collapse the cells like so so that only the input appears. Um, alternatively what you can do is you can after entering something that you really don't need an output you can hit use a semicolon and if you use a semicolon shift enter, um, you'll see you get no output line. So it really depends on how you want your document to appear um, when you're entering things and whether you want to see an output or not corresponding to that situation. Uh, we could also have entered all of these in the same cell. You'll notice we have two different cells here. Um, that um, with these two entries. Uh, we could have entered them in the same cell. Um, for example, I could have just simply typed mass equals twenty five and, and hit semicolon and then return. Now when I hit a return instead of using the down arrow what you'll see is that I'm in the same cell so my next line is still in the same cell um, and in this case we're just entering constants so sometimes that is the appropriate thing to do. And 
And then once I've entered everything that I want in that cell, I can go ahead and do a shift enter. And um, again, I get no output because I have the semicolons indicated. They're in the same cell. Um, so one advantage to doing this way is that if you want to reevaluate the numbers, you only have to reevaluate one cell as opposed to how we had entered it previously where I had to reevaluate both cells. Okay, so now we're ready to do a calculation and, and let's just use Einstein's equals mc squared. So we're going to calculate an energy and I'm just going to type energy here in the next cell. So energy and, and for variable names it can be anything. Uh, one thing that we'll note when we talk about Mathematica functions later on is that all Mathematica functions start with a capital letter. Um, so frequently you may want to name a variable with a lowercase start so that you know for sure that you're not confusing it with an, with an embedded Mathematica function. It's not to say that you can't use capital letters, you just have to make sure it's not going to conflict with something that's already embedded in, in Mathematica. So we're going to do energy, we're going to do equals, and now I'm just going to type um, e equals mc squared, so it's just going to be mass times. And earlier I noticed that the I, I noted that the asterisk corresponds to times. You can also just do a space and do c. And so when Mathematica sees the space, um, it knows that there's a multiplication involved. Whether, which way you do it depends on how you want things to appear. And so we're going to square this. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and do the shift caret here um, to square that. Um, and, and so we've got it set up and so on. I'm going to do is hit shift enter and I get a, a value. Again with no units because I haven't entered units and we're going to talk about units uh, later on in, in another video um, dealing with these kinds of computations. The other thing that I'll point out here is that um, when you do enter equations where you're using, for example, the caret instead of a superscript, if you want to, after the fact, after you've entered, turn it into something that looks nice, you can actually change this um, in the desktop version of Mathematica under cell. Um, you can convert to what's called traditional form. When you convert it to traditional form, it'll put it into a form that might be something that you would see um, if you were writing it in a text or, or in a nice format. Um, this is sometimes particularly useful when you're dealing with uh, equations that have quotients um, and trying to discern how everything is set up. We've certainly seen issues where it's easy when you write an equation that has quotients that uh, parentheses are very, very important and mixing up the parentheses in those equations can be somewhat confusing. In the traditional form, it will be much easier to uh, evaluate to determine whether you've entered things correctly or not. And we'll, we'll deal with that a little bit more later on. The final thing I want to look at in this particular video um, is, again, the hierarchical structure. Because you'll notice when I entered a new section in basic computations here, it created a new cell hierarchy. It started a new one. So the basic structure um, so, which we have up here, end it when I enter the new section. So that if I double click here, we'll see the basic structure collapses as such. Um, but the basic computations show up. I can double click on that, and now I have both of those sections which I can then open up. Now, I will point out that I am recording this video using Mathematica 11.1. .1. Mathematica 11.3 which at this recording is the most current version of Mathematica. We'll also show uh, some double arrows here to the right of the cell um, title uh, that will appear when it's collapsed and you just need to click on those to uncollapse those the cells. So that's just a feature, a uh, simple feature that was added in the, uh, uh, the next version 11.3 of Mathematica. So we'll stop here and we'll pick up with another video going into more detail about the basic structure and functionality of the Mathematica program.